Hi, this is Dr. Komosian, GP at King Source Medical Practice, and sometimes I have a few shifts in the hospital like today. This is a series where we talk about common medical conditions that could be treated at home without the need to see the doctor. Today, it's time to talk about chest infection. There are two main types of chest infection, as you see on the diagram. One type is called bronchitis, the other one is called pneumonia. The bronchitis is an inflammation of the tubes, uh, while the pneumonia is the inflammation of the very small tubes and the air sacs of the lung called alveoli. In lay language, both are called chest infection. However, the two conditions are very different in terms of how worried we need to be about them. Pleuris is another commonly used lay term that refers to a localized chest pain uh, that is worse on deep breathing. It could be a part of a chest infection, but many other conditions can cause this type of pain, which is beyond the scope of uh, this summary today. Now let's listen to a consultation between uh, me and the patient and um, it will be about chest infection. Be reassured that uh, this recording is not with a genuine patient. I asked one of my colleagues to be the patient for me for this recording. Good morning, this is Dr. Komoshi calling from King's North Medical Practice regarding Mrs. Hughes. Oh, hello, Dr. Komlansi, yes, Mrs. Hughes speaking. Oh, hello. Could you please confirm your full name and date of birth to make sure I have the correct notes open in front of me? Yes, sure. It's Amanda Hughes, 23rd of May, 1972. Thank you. How may I help you today? Well, I've had a cold and it's now spread to my chest. I've been bringing up green with thick mucus and my chest hurts in the middle as I cough. I've tried different cough medicines the past week or so and they did not work. I think I have a chest infection and I need antibiotics. I see, Mrs. Hughes. I'm sorry to hear that you're unwell. Do you also have a temperature? Uh, no, I had it about a week ago and a half ago uh, when the cold started, but I don't think I have a temperature now. Oh, this is good news. Um, you mentioned that you have chest pain in the middle. Do you have any other chest pains? No, um, just behind the breastbone in the middle and it feels heavy and tight. It is really bad when I'm coughing. Okay, do you feel short of breath with this tightness? Uh, yes, I do. Um, I can't seem to catch my breath when coughing. I feel I'm choking. It is really worse at night and I haven't slept well for three days now, so I'm really not good. Oh, you must be tired. This really doesn't help. Um, you say that you have green uh, thick mucus uh, with the cough. Uh, do you also bring up blood? Yes, Doctor. Um, I noticed once a few streaks of blood with the green frothy mucus after coughing violently. Oh, this must be frightening, Mrs Hughes. Um, but let me reassure you that a few streaks of blood uh, only once or a few times after heavy coughing is most likely coming from the broken lining of the airways rather than being a sign of a more serious infection, especially that you are generally well, aren't you? Yes, I, manage, um, I can manage at work, but I'm very tired and only eat here and there. And of course I can't sleep because of the cough. I see, this cough is very bothersome. Um, you say you tried to treat it with the medicine from the pharmacist. Um, yes, I did. They did nothing. I really do need some antibiotics. Yeah, it's understandable that you want to get better as soon as possible. Um, before we talk about the treatment, um, I just want to make sure that um, you don't have any risk factors for a serious lung infection. Um, I see in your notes that you never smoke tobacco. No, I've never smoked. Good, good. Um, uh, I can't see any references in your notes that you would have asthma, COPD or any other lung conditions. No, nothing like that. Um, I only have a blood pressure to take blood pressure t tablets and HRT. Oh, that's great. Uh, I'm glad to see that you don't have risk factors for a serious lung infection. Um, so to summarise that I understand everything correctly, you had a cold infection with temperature that started about um, 10 days ago and it has spread to the chest. Uh, now you have a chesty cough with green sputum. You had streaks of blood in the sputum once. Um, you have heaviness and pain in the middle of the chest that is worse on coughing. 
you feel breathless when you are coughing, but you don't have temperatures now and you can manage with your daily activities however you are tired from the constant cough that troubles you at night. Yes, that's correct. Uh, Mrs. Hughes, I agree with you um, that you have a chest infection. Um, in medical terms, it's called bronchitis, which means it's inflammation of the lining of the airways. Uh, what happened is actually that the virus that caused you the cold um, has spread to the deeper airways called the bronchi and uh, caused them to be inflamed, red, thickened um, and producing more mucus than normal. This is why you feel that the chest pain and the tightness uh, as the airways behind your breastbone look just as red and upset as your throat was to start with. Um, the mucus and the infection are irritating the lining, uh, causing you to cough. Um, it's very tiring, this cough. I understand you want to stop it, but it's actually a protective mechanism clearing out the mucus and the infection and preventing it from spreading to the deeper airways, causing you a more serious chest infection that would land you in hospital. Um, you're asking for antibiotics, uh, but unfortunately antibiotics don't work for viruses, so um, it wouldn't help you get better sooner. If anything, it might just give you side effects like nausea and diarrhea on top of what you already have. Okay, but my mucus is thick green. Um, I had a similar chest infection about five or six years ago and I was given antibiotics. Yes, yes, you're right. Traditionally, we believe that if the mucus is clear or pale yellow, then it is a viral infection. And if the mucus is green and thick, it is a sign of bacterial infection and antibiotics are needed. Uh, however, now we know from clinical studies that the sputum color uh, is not telling us if the infection is viral or bacterial. The color of the sputum only counts in patients with underlying conditions like COPD. Okay, so um, are you saying that you're not going to give me any antibiotics? Well, the vast majority of bronchitis are viral and antibiotics wouldn't really help you, I'm afraid. Okay, uh, can we at least try? I see you are desperate to get better and it's understandable. But I feel antibiotics would only make you feel worse with the side effects and taking antibiotics unnecessarily increases the risk of resistance. So when you really need the antibiotics, they might not work. Um, the bronchitis and the cough last for about three weeks, whatever treatment we use. This is not good news and not what you expected to hear from me today, but you can try a few things to make you feel less poorly until your immune system fights the virus off. Um, taking rest and uh, fluids, sleeping propped up, uh, taking painkillers for the chest pain can help. This is very disappointing though. I know, I know. Um, doctor, doctors can do, for example, a double heart and lung transplant, but we still can't treat a cough virus. It's very frustrating. Mm. Um, but the good news is that you have all the chances to get better in three weeks and it's unlikely that you need any prescriptions or hospital admission. Okay, so I am halfway through this now then? Yes, you, you had it for 10 days, uh, so you, you might have it for another 10 days. Uh, I expect you to get better um, after about three weeks. Um, but if you are deteriorating with high temperature, breathlessness and walking at level or at rest, if you are coughing up more blood, uh, or you're still coughing beyond three weeks, please call me back. Okay, that's fine, I'll do that then. Okay, uh, I hope you will get better soon. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks, bye-bye, bye. -bye. bye. Okay. Now we see that antibiotics most times not needed for chest infection because they are viral. But what can we do to ease the symptoms? Well, for temperature and chest pain, obviously paracetamol and ibuprofen could be taken. But what about the cough? You might remember cough was the most bothersome symptom for my patient, Mrs. Hughes. Let me quote the NICE guidelines. Experts agree that symptomatic treatment are the mainstay of treatment for acute bronchitis. To treat the cough, some people may wish to try the following self-care treatments. Honey, pelargonium, which is a herbal medicine, over-the-counter cough medicines containing guafenicin, 
which is an expectorant that uh, intended to help to bring up the sputum. Over the counter cough medicines containing cough suppressants, except codeine, if the person doesn't have a persistent cough or excessive secretions. Now listen. The NICE committee acknowledged the limited evidence of self-care treatment, but noted that promoting self-care may have a role in reducing antibiotic prescriptions and general practice consultations. So we advocate honey and lemon and cough medicine not because they work, but with the hope that people won't start to call up the doctors. If they do, then we have at least something else to suggest apart from antibiotics. So, because we just can't say that there is nothing that will stop your cough, you will keep coughing for three weeks until it goes on its own. This is not an acceptable concept, despite this being the truth and despite the guidelines being clear about that. VGPs just play along and keep suggesting cough medicine, honey and lemon and all the rest. Harmless but useless medication to prevent prescribing antibiotics that will more than likely to harm the patient. Simply because we can't accept the limits of medication and the, actually the limits of medical science that it cannot treat viral cough. If you want to think more broadly and more philosophically, we might see the parallel between the cough medicine and the poses that was worn by plague doctors in the medievals with the intention to prevent them catching uh, the Black Death. Because it doesn't need to work it only needs to give the impression, the illusion, that it works. There is a deep need to do something about it instead of accepting the total lack of control. Well, in my opinion, uh, we should start to move away from the medieval approach and use the evidence, what we have, and face the horrible truth. There's nothing what the medical science can do to stop the viral cough. We also need to be very, very clear to our patients when they need to start to worry. As I explained to Mrs. Hughes, it would be very high temperatures, feeling generally unwell, feeling genuinely breathless at rest or walking at level just out to the bathroom or to the kitchen. If there are shivers, rigors, the patient is really unwell, can't get out of bed. A new confusion or increasing confusion to normal could be a sign of severe infection. Also, if the patient brings up blood like this, this or this. If the patient has underlying lung conditions like asthma, COPD, bronchiectasis, if the patient has compromised immune system because of their underlying condition like diabetes or because of their medication. They may, might take chemotherapy for cancer treatment or they might take immunosuppressants for whatever inflammatory condition. In these cases, we are more worried that the chest infection is the other type, the pneumonia, which almost always needs medical attention. Bedside CRP, which is C-reactive protein, is a very useful tool in assessing people with chest infection. It is used in the hospital for those patients uh, who are unwell enough to come to hospital and because it has a very high 98.4% negative predictive value. It means that if it's negative, it's very, very unlikely that the patient has severe acute infection that uh, needs treatment. Another common scenario is uh, when a worried mum calls in asking for a face-to-face -face appointment so that the doctor can listen to the child's chest because 
they hear it's rattly or sometimes they can feel the rattles uh, when they hold the child and feel it with their fingers. Again, I think there is overestimation of how much a doctor can do with a stethoscope. I know that stethoscope is the symbol of medicine. Similarly, as the white hat was in the medieval times, and doctors don't rush to disperse the myth around the stethoscope, we use it rather to show our status. But it's particularly useless when it comes to assess children for pneumonia. Other symptoms together, like how the child is in general, how the behaviour is, any high temperatures for longer than five days, any breathing difficulty, ribs are sucking in, under the stomach sucking in, how much is the child feeding, drinking any water, wetting their nappies or passing urine to the toilet, their breathing rate, how many times did they take a breath per minute, these are all together give you a much better chance to diagnose pneumonia than the stethoscope. Even worse, when the parent is asking how the child will be in three days time when the family is leaving for holiday. I'm really sorry, I'm just a doctor. I can only tell whether the child needs any intervention right now. And please don't confuse my stethoscope with the crystal ball to tell you what will happen in the future. We need to take it day by day and if you notice any of the worry signs that we just discussed before, you need to bring the child back for reassessment and then we'll see what needs to be done then. But I can't guarantee by putting my stethoscope on the child's chest today that the child will be okay in three days time so the family can safely leave for the holiday. All this information about chest infection might come to you as a massive shock, I'm sorry about this. But yes, medicine has its limitations and the stethoscope is not a magic wand, even if we doctors sometimes tend to use it like one. We need to be realistic about medicine and use it wisely. I hope you will get better soon. Bye.